Welcome back to Growth Profits. I am your host, Sean Crabtree, and today we're talking about multitasking. Guess what it is? It's fake news. We're going to talk about it and what you need to know about the fake news of multitasking. Stay with us. Hi, folks. I'm Sean Crabtree. And I'm Cameron Bailey. We don't want to change the way we do business. We want to change the way you're thinking about your business. We want you to have better results, happier clients, and make more money. Let's get it started. And welcome back to Growth Profits, the show that is dedicated to you having happier clients, better results, making more money, and enjoying the ride. And today, we're talking about what I believe is one of the uh, wildest misnomers out there, this concept of multitasking. Why are we talking about it, and what do you need to know about it, and what can we do about it? So let me share some stats with you. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I did a short video on a morning huddle the other day talking about the concept that multitasking doesn't really exist. And to be honest, I caught a little flack about it uh, because evidently there are lots of people who take pride in their ability to multitask, Mr. Producer. Um, so I caught a little flack about this and I thought, you know what, we need to talk about this where we have some extended time to be able to break it down so I can show you some stats and so forth. Now, what we talk about on this channel and all of our other social channels, uh, social media channels, constantly is this concept that there's really nothing that goes on in your office or in your business. It doesn't matter what you are as a commercial contractor, an HVAC person, a fence builder, a dentist, uh, a surgeon. There's nothing really that goes on that can allow you to go on autopilot when it comes to the important aspects of your business. If you're a dental office, there's nothing that goes on in your practice that doesn't require conscious, intentional thought. This idea of multitasking, which I understand a lot of people, if you're listening to this right now, uh, you're, you, you may not agree with me, but uh, I'm going to shoot you some stats on this. A lot of people believe that, that multitasking is a way to increase productivity and effectiveness. And I want to tell you that it's not. And I want to tell you what you need to do about it when it comes to being intentional versus being on autopilot and multitasking. So let me share some stats with you real quick. Do you think of yourself as a multitasker, Mr. Producer? No. Okay. <laughs> I really don't either, but only because I, I realized long ago I'm not smart enough to uh, multitask. So there's uh, many, many studies on this, by the way. But the, the, the study that I happened to pull came from Stanford University. And, and here's what the, the – uh, it was done by uh, Clifford Nass. And here's what the study basically says. They studied a whole group of different groups of people. And what they found is that the people who are multitasking, in other words, they're dealing with several things, several tasks at one time, had a 40%, 40% less productivity rate than those who took on one task and completed the task and then moved to the next task. Um, what he basically says in the study is that Multitasking, the term itself, is a misnomer. I like this. Multitasking, the term itself, is actually a misnomer. Human beings cannot do more than one task at a time. Instead, what we do is more, he says, instead, the term that we use for what multitasking really is, is called task switching. In other words, what we do is we focus for a short burst of time on one task and then move to the next task and focus for a switch to the next task and focus for a short period of time on that task. And the challenge comes in when we can't remember where we were with the last task. Things get dropped, um, you know, they slip through the cracks, and productivity overall is reduced by 40%. If I've got your attention on this thing, if, you're, if I haven't completely made you mad, if you're driving down the road listening to this and you're going, oh, okay. I'll believe the study because it kind of makes sense. 
I've always said this is true. I've always believed that um, somebody who multitask is really not multitasking. They're only focusing on short, uh, a short amount of time on each task, and they're really not getting anything done. This study really proves it. So if multitasking is fake news, you like that, Mr. Producer? I do like that. If multitasking is fake news, then what is it that you should really do about it? I mean, what is the answer? You know what? I want to give you three, actually four things, three things that I think you need to do about it. And this is what I focused on with my with my morning video the other day, but we've got a, a little bit uh, longer time to be able to talk about it. If you think about your business, it doesn't matter what business that you're in. Um, if you're an entrepreneurial service business, which all of, uh, of the folks that we work with are, then think about it. All of the important things that go on in your business revolve around people. Therefore, it's relationship-based. Now think about that. It doesn't matter if you're a contractor, HVAC, a CPA, a dentist, a, um, a medical practitioner. It doesn't matter what it is that you do. If you're in the service business, it is a relationship-based business. Therefore, you've got every circumstance is different. Personalities are different. You can't unplug your brain and go on autopilot and task switch. You can't do it. You got to focus and be present on where it is that you're trying to go in the moment and complete that before you go to something else. So I want to give you some steps. The first one is be intentional. And I want to give you some things. I want to tell you what I mean by that. We run into this all the time. I was just having this conversation, as a matter of fact, with um, a, a, a great team member at a dental office that we work with. And she's at the front desk. And she was really upset because... She is confirming appointments in the schedule. And what happened is she's, you know, doing all of her confirmations throughout the course of a day and she's confirming the patients. And the next day, it's just recently happened yesterday, one of the, pa uh, two of the patients actually didn't show. She called one of the patients and said, hey, is everything okay? And the patient said, sure. And she said, well, you had an appointment, you know, 10 minutes ago. And the patient said, oh, I didn't realize that. And she said, we just spoke yesterday and I confirmed this appointment with you. And the patient said, I don't remember that. I like, I, are you sure you talked to me? And she said, yeah, I, I talked to you. I talked to you and you said that you were going to be here. And the patient's going, I don't even remember that conversation. Well, as we dove into it, really what she realized is, when she was doing the confirmations, she was task oriented. She was task switching. She was not intentional in what it is that she was trying to do. So she's picking up the phone, she's making the call, she's hanging up. She's picking up the phone, she's making the call, she's hanging up. She's going through the motions of giving effort toward the confirmation. But what's missing is a real presence, a real intention. So when she's talking to the patient, there's no gut check involved. Like, is the patient listening and engaged with me? When the patient says, I'll be there, you know, are, do I have the presence of mind to gauge? Is the patient really committing that they're going to be here? Are they even listening to me? Or am I just going down the list and, and, and making the calls? So here's what we did. And this is really, this is, uh, she called me, um, this morning and basically said, hey, this is really making a big difference by being intentional. This is What we're talking about here is multitasking isn't real. It's fake news. What we should do instead is be focused on the completion of one task at a time and the steps for doing that are number one, be intentional. I wanna give you some sub steps to being intentional. Before you begin a task, you know what? If you're driving down the road, pull off the road and write this down because this will work. Taking deliberate action, being intentional. There's three sub steps to this. Number one, before you start a task, in your mind, state what is the intention that I'm trying, what is my outcome that I'm trying to accomplish in this task? Number two, pause and think about that outcome as your intention. Then number three, take action toward it. So let's back up and go to my example of 
um, this particular dental office and confirming the patient's appointments. What she was doing was picking up the phone, going through the motions of making the call and confirming the appointment, hanging up and going to the next call. Now what she's going to do is, before she picks up the phone, in her mind she's going to state her intention and her outcome. Her intention and her outcome is, number one, I want to engage the patient and make sure that I have the patient's attention. Number two, I want to confirm the appointment. But number three, I want to engage my gut in the conversation and really, really make a determination. When the patient says, yes, I'll be there, all right, do I believe based on what they're saying and how they're saying it, that they're engaged in this conversation? And do I believe that when they say I'll be there, they are fully engaged and committed to being there? Now with that gut involved, right? Now I can hang up the phone realizing that I've accomplished what it is that I'm after. So number one, be intentional. And the sub steps to that are before you start a task in your mind, state your intended outcome. Number two, pause, get clear on that. Then number three, take action. If I'm you, by the way, on this first one, being intentional, I'd have a conversation with my entire team. There is nothing that goes on in our business that can be autopilot. It all involves engagement. So it's all involving being intentional and taking deliberate action. Have that conversation with your team. Make that part of what we're doing on a regular basis and then coach it, right? It's not doing you any good to have a philosophical conversation about, hey guys, we need to be more engaged in what we're doing. We need to pay attention to details. Those sound great, but you got no action step. You got no way to follow up on it. It's just a philosophical thing. It's not gonna get anywhere. Following those three sub steps, right? Stating your intentional outcome, pausing, and then taking the action to make sure that you're completing that outcome. That's what's gonna work. Number two, throw multitasking out the window. And instead, number two, prioritize the most important task that you have every single day. Work on those highest priority tasks first and don't allow any distractions. Now, in order to do that, that means to accomplish number two, which is it's basically part of number one, being intentional, right? In order to work on your highest priority items first, it's gonna require you not to come in again on autopilot and just begin working on your day. Take a moment, figure out all of the things that you have going on in your day and what are the most important items, prioritize those first, and then work through every single one of those with no distractions. What are your distractions? You and I both know what our distractions are. Email, text, right? If you start with your highest priority item first, and then you check email, you already know what happens. You jump with the intention of just responding to this one email, and then that 30 seconds turns into 20 minutes, and now you're diving into other emails, and before you know it, you've just got completely sucked into switching to a completely other task, complete, a complete other task. Don't go there, right? But work on your highest priority items first, and don't allow for any distractions before you go to your lesser priority items. What we're talking about here is multitasking, it's fake news. And for you to be able to get in control, the first thing you gotta do is be intentional and take deliberate action. We talked about three steps for that. Number two, take a moment before you start your day and figure out what are your highest priority items first and work on those with zero distraction before you move on to the lower priority task. And then number three, and this is gonna require a little bit of focus, okay, so stay with me. Number three, leave a blank space in your day. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever that is. Leave that blank space intentionally for your distraction items. One time a day, right? That's your email checks. That's your, your texts, right? Those are the things that are, you know, calling somebody over here, whatever it is. Those are the things that you need to do, but you know that if you do those at the wrong time, it will distract you and throw off your entire day. So rather than doing those willy-nilly, 
deliberately leave blank space in your day to take on those high distraction items. That, at the end of the day, is what's going to have you be successful. Remember, we started this conversation with, there is nothing that goes on in your business that you can just reduce to autopilot. If you're going to be successful, it means a focus. It means being intentional. It means you being in control. It means knowing what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Following those three big steps is what's going to get you there. Number one, taking deliberate action and being intentional. And the three subsets to that are, number one, before you start a task in your mind, state it out loud. What is my intended outcome? Number two, pause and get focused on that outcome. Then number three, take action. That's what's going to have you be deliberate. That's what's going to have you be intentional and take action that is deliberately geared toward where it is that you're trying to go. Number two, before you go in and start your day, figure out what those highest priority items are and commit that you are going to finish those high priority tasks before, with no distraction, before you go into the lower priority task. And then number three, intentionally leave a blank space in your day specifically for the high distraction items. It may sound like a small thing, but remember, if you're not listening to me, listen to what the Stanford study uh, uh, told you. 40% of productivity is lost by task switching. Multitasking doesn't exist. It's task switching and task switching involves a 40% loss of productivity. What I want you to do is require less effort and get more result. And that means you being in control, being deliberate, controlling your schedule, prioritizing items, and working on one task at a time before you switch to other tasks. At the end of the day, that's what's gonna have you with happier clients, better results, making more money, and enjoying the ride. And that's what it is that I want for you. I'm Sean Crabtree, and thank you for joining us on Growth Profits. We'll see you next time, same time, same channel. Have a great week. Thank you.